So today we're constructing a dilation. In case you don't know, a dilation is when we take a shape and a point and we either stretch it away from that point to make it bigger or we pull it towards the point to make it smaller. All right, dilations keep the same shape but just, just change the size. So we end up making similar figures. All right, so let's do a couple of examples. All right, this first one says we're gonna dilate the figure with a scale factor of two using point P as the center of dilation. So here's my triangle, here's point P. We're gonna stretch it away from P. So it's gonna be, tw each one of these points is gonna be twice as far away from P as it currently is, okay? So the way we do that is first, we draw the path of each point from that point P. So for example, point A, that vertex A, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line from P through A there. So that's the path A is gonna take away from P. And similarly, I'll do the same with B. And then I'll do the same with C. I think I need to make that longer. Probably a lot longer. We'll see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, now, we know the distance from P to A is this far. Our scale factor is two. That means we're gonna double this length, and that's where we need our compass, okay? So I've set my compass for the distance between P and A. There it is, okay? So that's the current distance. Like I said, the scale factor is two, so we're gonna double this. So I'm gonna take this and this repeat it over here. Ooh, I didn't make the line long enough. So let me make that line a little bit longer and then we can see where A ends up. There we go. All right, so A is gonna end up way over here. This is the path A is following and we know that distance, using my compass, is where it's gonna end up. That's gonna be my A prime. Okay, and we'll do the same thing with B and C as well, all right? So for B, I'm gonna, again, take that distance from P to B. There it is right here. And then my scale factor is two, so I'm gonna double it. One, two. There's where B prime's gonna end up, right there. All right, and then finally for C. And C, it looks like it has pretty far distance away from P, but there it is right here. A little bit bigger, right there, okay? And their scale factor is two, so we're gonna double it. One, two. Oh, it's just a little short. I need to extend this line a little bit. All right. And yeah, the shape always ends up a little bit bigger than you expect it to be. All right, so there's where C ends up. That's my C prime, all right? And if I wanna know what my dilated shape ends up looking like, I just connect up those points, okay? So let's do that. Here's A to C. Here's B to C. And then here's A and B. And there it is, all right? And notice, the shape ends up where each side is twice the length of the original. And it's a little bit further away from P than the original was. In fact, it's twice as far away. It was right here, B was here, now it's twice as far away. All right, and it still has the same shape, general shape, it's just bigger, all right? Because we use a scale factor of two, all right? Let's do one where, we, where the shape actually gets smaller though, okay? So here, I've got a second example. It says, dilate the figure with a scale factor of one half this time using point P as our center. Okay, this time it's gonna shrink and it's gonna get closer to P and all the sides are gonna get half as small, okay? And it turns out we follow the same general strategy. From each vertex of my triangle, I'm going to draw its path towards P, all right? So here's D, here's E, and here's F. And notice I don't have to draw the lines as long this time because it's gonna kind of get closer to P, not further away. 
All right, now, this distance from D to P, we need to find the we need to find the halfway point of D to P because remember, this distance, we're gonna cut it in half. Now, how do I find the halfway point of this distance? I'm going to construct a perpendicular bisector to find that midpoint, okay? And if you don't remember how to find a perpendicular bisector, I do have a video on how to do that. But what I'm gonna do is set my, cus uh, my distance of my compass for more than half the distance of this line and swing an arc and then keep that same distance on the other side of this segment and swing an arc. Ooh, I just barely got there. Let me do this a little bit more. There we go. And then where these two arcs intersect is my perpendicular bisector of the segment. And the reason why that's helpful is because this point right here has to be the midpoint of the segment because this line cuts the segment in half. So if this was my original D, this is my d prime. And notice, d prime is half the distance to p that d was, okay? And we're gonna do the same thing for all the other points now. Let me do e here, okay? So again, set my compass for more than half the distance, and I'll swing an arc from one end, keep that same distance on my compass and swing an arc from the other end. And where those two arcs intersect, here and here, that will be, that will determine my perpendicular bisector, and where that intersects my original line segment is my E prime. All right, we're almost done. I only got one more to do then, P to F. All right, again, we need that distance to be more than half the distance of the line segment for my compass length. So here we go. There we go, there's one. On the other side, there it is. Construct my perpendicular bisector. There it is. And where it intersects that line, that's the halfway point. That's the midpoint of that segment, and we'll call it F prime. All right? So I've now found the new vertices of my triangle. Now I can connect them up and make my dilated triangle. All right? D to E. D to F, E to F. There we go. And there's my final product there. And notice, the original triangle, the new triangle. The sides of the new triangle are half the length of the original one. And also, notice it's closer to P. The new distance from D to P is half the distance the original D was to P. All right? So dilations always create the same shaped figure. It's just smaller or bigger. And we just follow these simple steps to construct them. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.